Hey, greetings and welcome to our uh, weekly podcast, our educational rounds here at Seclair. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist at Seclair, and today I'm joined by... My name's Anna. I'm a physician assistant student. And... Amanda, also a physician assistant student. And also today we're uh, fortunate enough to be joined by Dr. Lori Lankowitz, and rather than me fumble through uh, her bio, I think I'll let her talk a little bit about herself. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Lori Lankowitz. I have a doctorate in physical therapy as well as a master's degree in physical therapy, bachelor's degree in athletic training, a certificate as a natural nutritionist, and also as a personal uh, wellness and business coach. I own Balance for Wellness, physical therapy, and integrative health center. We're located in Mars and Butler, PA, and soon to combine those clinics uh, right in Penn Township in Butler. Well, good. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. And today's uh, topic is the connection between mental and physical health. What it boils down to: if things aren't right between your ears, things aren't right below your ears. And if things aren't right below your ears, things aren't right between your ears. And uh, as you may have caught on by now, here at Seclair, we're an integrative, uh, holistic. Uh, psychiatric facility where we uh, just don't write prescriptions where we look at we look at the whole person we feel that we'd be doing uh, people a great disservice if we would just look at as a person as depressed or look at a person as anxious uh, they're human beings they're they're human beings with uh, an inner spirit uh, a wonderful, noble, or higher self, and what we like to do is look at all facets of that individual's life and see where we could either enhance, offer enhancements, or offer uh, some folks where they could perhaps unlearn some old thought patterns and behaviors that didn't uh, didn't benefit them so well. So today I'm going to ask a little. I'm going to ask. I'm going to throw this to Anna and ask her what she's prepared a little bit about what we're talking about. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone, and in your body there's something called an HPA axis, which is a hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which just means that things that occur in your brain also affect your adrenal glands, which are the little glands above your kidneys. And what happens is when you're in a stressful situation, those glands secrete cortisol. And cortisol in small amounts is good because it creates that fight or flight response in your body. But if you're in stressful environments for a long time, it makes you a little bit more and more sensitive to even just the smallest amount of stress. And that can lead to some problems with your body, which I'll let Amanda talk about. So the World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease without infirmity. Um, they also state that health is there is no health without mental health. And so basically there is a um, strong relationship between physical and mental health. Any um, illness that affects our ability to function can reduce our well-being and lead to mental illness. Um, for example, chronic physical conditions can cause um, poor mental health and vice versa. Poor mental health can also lead to chronic med medical conditions. Could you could you tell us a little bit about what uh, the, in, the the fight or flight yo yo thing that we get into the, all the cortisol in in your body and cortisol is a good thing. However, when we have uh, too much, Amanda, what what can happen? Well, like Anna said, cortisol is a response to stress in your body, and it can affect many different systems, including your bone growth, your blood pressure, your immune system, uh, metabolism, uh, fats, carbohydrates, and protein. It can affect your nervous system, and um, if you have constant cortisol or chronic stress, it can cause impaired cognition, decreased thyroid function, and it can um, cause an accumulation of abdominal fat, which can lead to cardiovascular risk as well. Sure. And uh, conversely, depression can affect many of the same type of people health-wise. Mm -hmm. And they would, in your, uh, in your time here, what, what have you found that to be? A lot of people that come in with depression, they're not just showing the sad or depressed affect. They also can have a lot of chronic pain. Normally they say it's in their shoulders or their back or even their neck. And 
it can occur with also sleep disturbances. A lot of our people who come in, they also, they don't just complain about the psychological problems, but also trouble sleeping. It also can affect their appetite, either increasing or de decreasing it as well. And now, uh, fortunately, we have Dr. Lankowitz with us today, and I'm going to turn it over to her and perhaps ask her to address some of these points and some of the, maybe some of the commonalities that between what we see here at Seclair and what she sees in her in her clinic. There is no doubt and actually more and more I'm realizing this connection between chronic stress and cortisol issues, uh, adrenal dysfunction, thyroid dysfunction, you know the whole endocrine system just being poorly affected and the people that come in to us with chronic pain and we are taking this more and more seriously and I am so glad to be uh, in connection with a place like Seclair and uh, with other places who are looking at the entire body because we do know uh, as physical therapists that people who are in this kind of chronic flight or fight which you guys are talking about uh, they're having things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, um, inability to lose weight just feeling tired, malaise and fatigue, and they come in and tell us, well, my neck hurts, my back hurts, you know, I have this pain all over the place. I've gone to my doctor and they tell me, well, I need to change my nutrition or lose weight or give me an antidepressant, and it, it's just not working. So, and more so for me over the last maybe year or two, um, understanding this at a different level uh, from physical therapy, because what we're used to are as PTs are treating kind of the acute issues, you know, somebody hurts themselves or maybe it is chronic and, you know, but we're giving the diagnosis, uh, given the diagnosis of fibro and what can we do with it and we just kind of keep digging uh, deeper and deeper to understand the endocrine system along with this. And so to get that connection, that mind-body connection where we know uh, we have to work as PTs and also with nutritionists and with MDs to figure out what's going on in the endocrine system. Is there really uh, hypothyroidism going on? Is there gluten sensitivity going on? Are the adrenals just totally out of whack and, and just pumping out cortisol all, all over the place? We need to know that through blood work uh, and even through symptomology. And then we have to definitely look at the mental aspect, which you're all doing. And so th that marriage of both the, the mental health and the physical health, in my opinion, can change healthcare. It can change what we're doing presently, and it can help people, especially between that, the probably people in their 30s to 60s that are saying, boy, I have these aches and pains, and I don't know what to do with them. I can't lose this weight. And people just, just keep telling me I'm not trying hard enough. Or we can all come in and say, let's look at, the whole connection and, and take you to a, a better state of health. And what we do here at Seclair, Dr. Lankowitz, is take more of a proactive stance toward individuals' health and wellness uh, rather than reactive. When they come here, it's because of a, a reactive issue. However, our, our goal is to have these individuals get a tool belt full of tools that so when they can go through life when things then things continue to happen. Uh, the speed bumps, the potholes are still out there. Uh, and in an attempt to to deal with them in a more calm and rational uh, and, and stable productive way. And I'm sure that uh, you deal with many of the same type of issues. Absolutely. And I've had this discussion already with Dr. Chaudhry and the importance of prevention. And again, what we can do programming wise to uh, you know, get people ahead of the game. So at the early stages, you know, I'm going to relate this to adhesive capsulitis in the shoulder. So people know, may know that as frozen shoulder. And so they injure their shoulder. They may not even know why. And little by little, they realize, well, I'm struggling to get my hand in my back pocket or, or to put my shirt on or whatever. And before we know it, they're in full-blown capsulitis and they can't move it. And if we could actually have a conversation with them and do an evaluation when they first injure that shoulder, we could obviously prevent them from having pure capsulitis. And, and that's just an easy way of saying that we're talking about the same thing. If we can get people right at that initiation of stress and say, okay, let's talk through 
what's going on in your mind. Let's talk through the stressors. Let's give you the toolbox that you're talking about, Jim. And then let's also look at this from a physical standpoint and you know, reduce the symptomology as quickly as possible and get into an exercise program that can help relieve stress, that can help you know, reverse what's going on in the adrenals. Then again, you know, we are, we're preventative. And, and then we teach that to the general public. You know, do you need yoga, stress reduction techniques, so on and so forth? And we change again the phase of healthcare. And that's one of the things that uh, we attempt to assist people in changing mindsets as a, this is the way it's always been. This is the way I was raised. This is I'm stuck in a rut. Uh, what we try to get across to people that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, <laughs> Which is one, which is one of the, in the model, one of the modalities we use here. It's a Claire's dialectical behavioral therapy, which is the dialectic being acceptance and change. Uh, one of the things that I'm sure that you run into is we cannot write a prescription for motivation. <laughs> I'm sure that you've heard the old saying that you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink. However, you can make him thirsty. And that's, <laughs> that's one of the things we attempt to do. Yeah, um, we use that all the time. Actually, we use that analogy, and and we actually chuckle because when people actually start drinking the water here, um, you know, we, we invite them into our, our new way of thinking, and, and that's always a positive uh, thing to occur, obviously. But, yeah, you know, this is all about education, and uh, Balance for Wellness is about education. I know St. Clair is about education, and we have to begin to educate the public uh, in a more rounded way. And, you know, if we can bring us together as practitioners and bring in the physical and the mental, the nutrition, the spiritual, we bring it all together, we're then educating people uh, in mind, body, spirit. And, and that's the way to start to truly change mindsets and then to give support and, uh, and, and effectively make change in the body. Well, Dr. Lori, uh, could you share with uh, our listeners and our viewers how they could contact you? Yes, there are multiple ways uh, on our website at www.balanceforwellness.com. Our information is on there. Uh, we can be reached at our Mars office at 724-687-0731 and Butler at 724-477-3181. Well, that's great, and uh, we so much appreciate you uh, being here today as I've been joined by... I'm Anna. And Amanda. And to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google Plus, or follow us on Twitter under C. Claire Life, and keep an eye on any of these for our next live recording Mondays around noon to ask your questions. You can also find this and other grand rounds on youtubecom video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles of our great blog. And for Dr. Lori, Anna, Amanda, and myself, we'll leave you with, as always, please be good to yourself.